नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वुत्तो दे actually some of us in our ma class are studying with all there but uh, some of us seem to be uh, not understanding well so that's why we organized this discussion uh, so i will share i will be sharing my knowledge so you can ask any question if uh, anything is not clear so vutto uh, daya is the pali prosody pali prosody uh, so uttodaya uh, means uh, there are two words in uttodaya actually uttodaya is a compound it's a samasa uh, there are two words utta and udaya utta and udaya two words so utta means uh, gatha utta is a synonym for gatha or verse or stanza udaya means arising so uh, the place from where verses or gathas arise we call that place butto there that is this book itself so uh, actually this is a bahubbihi samasa we all know bahubbihi samasa vuttanam udayo etasmati butto dayo that is the definition vuttanam udayo etasmati butto dayo we can uh, we can uh say vutto the yang or vutto the yo both are correct uh, so uh vutta nang udayo etasma etasma from this book or from this uh uh work vutta uh, nang udayo the arising of verses or arising of stanzas arising of gathas uh, occur that's why we call this book we call this work vutto the Uh, literally it means the uh, composition of uh, meters composition of meters but actually the actual meaning according to the definition is that the place from where stanzas arise stanzas occur so we call this pali prosody so prosody means the study of poetic uh, poetic meters study of poetic meter meters is called as prosody so do you know the uh, difference between prosody and meter prosody and meter no but the, no so the prosody uh, prosody means this whole study about meters uh, study about poetic meters is called as prosody uh, in other words we can call a book with which we study uh, meters or pali poetry we can call it prosody so prosody is the study or the, uh, the or the book where from where we study pali meters 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 is the uh, rhythmic structure of a verse the rhythmic structure of a verse is called as meter so there are so many rhythmic structures to compose pali poems or pali verses so those meters are included in prosody those meters are included in uttode so the uttode itself is the pali prosody there are so many meters or so many rhythmic structures to compose uh, verses within this prosody is it clear the difference between prosody and meter yes sante okay okay so uh, this is the uttode book actually this is a, a translation and a explanation from venerable anand jyoti i will show you the cover page yeah this is the book this is actually the explanation by venerable anand jyoti bhikkhu so uh, the vuttodaya is written by venerable sangarakkita of sri lanka he is a scholar monk lived in actually sub commentary period have you heard about uh, venerable sariputta from sri lanka 
He was the author of Saratha Dipani Tika. So this Venerable Sangharakita is a disciple of Venerable Sariputta. So uh, this is the explanation of Utto there. This is the Utto there book I downloaded today from the internet. This is the Utto there book without explanations. So there are six chapters in this book. There are six chapters and stanzas like about uh, 136 or something. Yeah, 136 verses. The first chapter is called as Sanya Paribhasa Niddesa. Sanya Paribhasa Niddesa. So today we are going to study the Sanya Paribhasa Niddesa. And second chapter is Matta Vutti Niddesa. Uh, this one. And the third chapter is Sama Vutti Niddesa. Fourth chapter is Adha Sama Vutti Niddesa. Fifth one is Visama Vutti Niddesa. And sixth chapter is Chappache Vibhaga. Chappache Vibhaga. So the first chapter, Sanya Paribhasa Niddesa, is like an introduction to Vutto there. Like an introduction to Vutto there. Uh, then this second, third, fourth and fifth chapters uh, explain about the meters, Pali meters or Pali verses, how to compose verses. Then the sixth chapter is a, is a further explanation, actually uh, extra knowledge about verses. So we learn how to compose verses in uh, second, third, fourth and fifth chapters. So let's go to the first chapter. This is the first, uh, first gatha of the first chapter. It is, it is a homage to the Buddha. We know in ancient books, they start, the, start their works by uh, paying homage, paying respect to the Buddha or someone they respect. So uh, the Venerable Sangharakita started this book, Buttode, by paying homage, paying respect to Buddha. So uh, the first gatha is Namathu Jana Santana Tama Santana Bhedino Dhammu Jalanta Ruchino Munindo Data Rochino. That means the meaning is here in a red color. May you revere the moon like Lord of Sages, who with his splendid shining teaching breaks off the race of darkness that have spread among the people. So that is the meaning. I'm not going to explain word by word because we have a limited time. Actually, our professor started uh, started from the second chapter. Did you notice that? We started from the second chapter, like Arya Gatha and everything. Uh, he did not explain the first chapter, but I think the first chapter, introductory chapter is very important. So uh, here, to uh, give a brief explanation, here Namathu is Namo Athu, Namo homage or respect. Athu may be Jana Santana, Tama Santana, Bhedino, Dhammujjalanta Ruchino, Munindo Data Rochino. So actually, uh, uh, Munindo Data Rochino refers to uh, Buddha. And this Jana Santana, Tamasantana, Bhedino, and Dhammujjalanta Ruchino. These two words are uh, adjectives or modifiers for this uh, word. So here, Munindo Data Rochi. Meaning of Munindo Data Rochi is Muninda. We know Muninda uh, is uh, another word for, it's a similar word for Buddha, Dasabalo, and so on. So, uh, Odata Rochi. Odata Rochi means here, moon like. Odata Rochino, the meaning is given as moon like because Odata means clean, Rochi or Ruchi means uh, race, race. So uh, he uh, who has clean and clear race is called as Odata Rochi. So it actually refers to moon, but here uh, it refers to Lord Buddha who is uh, similar to the moon. That's why uh, the meaning is given as moon-like. It is, it is uh, actually a taddhita, upama taddhita, uh, odata rochivya, 
ஓதாத ரோச்சி சோ முனிந்தோச்ச சோ ஓதாத ரோச்சி ரோச்சி சாத்தி முனிந்தோதாத ரோச்சி சோ த மூன் லைக் லோட் புத்தா த புத்தா ஹூ இஸ் லைக் மூன் சோ தீஸ் டூ வேர்ட்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் தி அஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் டூ அஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் வை புத்தா இஸ் சிமிலர் டு த மூன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ரீசன் இஸ் ஜன சந்தான தம சந்தான பேதினோ வினோ ஜன ஜன ரிஃபர்ஸ் டு பீப்பல் ஓ சம்டைம்ஸ் பீன்ஸ் ஸோ ஜன சந்தான் அக்கார்டிங் டு த மீனிங் கிவன் பை வனரபல் ஆனந்த ஜோதி பிக்கு சந்தான் ஹீ கிவ்ஸ் த மீனிங் ஆஸ் இஸ் ஸ்ப்ரெட் பட் ஆக்சுவலி இன் மியன்மா இன் பர்மிஸ் புக்ஸ் திஸ் சந்தான இஸ் given the meaning as continuity we know the chitta santana and so on so this is the here also santan refers to chitta santana so jana santana is the uh, uh, chitta santana of people or the continuity of mind of people so within that uh, continuity of minds of people or within people in other other words there is Thama Santana. Thama is darkness. Santana is race as the meaning given here. So, uh, Thama Santana is the race of darkness. Race of darkness. So, there are race of darkness within people. What is this? Uh, what are those race of darkness? Actually, uh, here, race of darkness refers to Moha or Avijja. Uh, so uh bhedi no bhedi he who breaks up he who breaks up the race of darkness within people so this whole world jana santana samatana tamma santana bhedi no whole world refers to lord buddha so as the moon breaks up the of the darkness in the world the lord buddha breaks up the uh, darkness which is called as moha uh, inside uh, people's minds so that's why buddha is similar to the moon another reason is dhammu jalanta ruchi no dhammu jalanta ruchi dhamma refers to teaching as uh, the meaning given here but actually we know there are 10 types 10 uh kinds of dhammas magga phala uh, nirvana and uh, pariyapti four magga four phala uh, one nirvana then nine and we add pariyapti to it so uh, in in uh, commentaries and in myanmar tradition we take those uh, 10 dhammas as the meaning of dhamma here dham mujjalanta ruchi no ujjalanta means shining it comes from ujjalati uh, ruchi ruchino splendid so uh, splendid shining teaching dhammujjalanta ruchi who has the splendid shining teaching is called as dhammujjalanta ruchi it also refers to lord buddha so as the moon has splendid shining rays the lord buddha has splendid shining uh, teaching or splendid shining dhamma so because of that lord buddha is called as dhammu jalanta ruchi so uh, because of these two reasons buddha is similar to the moon that is why we uh, that is why the venerable sangha rakhita mention uh, munindo data ruchi no moon like buddha முனிந்தோ தாத்த ரோச்சினோ நமோ அத்து மை ஹோமேஜ் மே பி மே மை ஹோமேஜ் பி டு த மூன் லைக் லோட் புத்தா ஹியர் இன் த தேர்ட் லைன் முனி முனி இன் த லோட் ஆஃப் சேஜஸ் ஆக்சுவலி இன் த ரிஃபர்ஸ் டு சேஜஸ் ஸோ சாரி சாரி முனி ரிஃபர்ஸ் டு சேஜஸ் லைக் இட் இஸ் அ சிம்பிளர் வேர்ட் ஃபார் தாபஸ் and isi in the means the lord or the king so uh, the king of all sages is called as muninda so lord buddha is the king or the lord or the master of all sages so uh, in simple 
uh, words or, or as a whole we can give the meaning as may you revere the moon like lord of sages who with his splendid shining teaching breaks of the rays of darkness that have spread among the people so that is the uh, stanza uh, with which venerable sangarakita pay pays his homage to the buddha so is it clear do you have any questions regarding this gatha it, it's no clear but the saru 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 okay it's clear so uh, here the, we should explain this word also sanya paribhasa nidesa sanya means names we know that technical terms paribhasa venerable sang uh, venerable anand jyoti gives the meaning as symbols actually uh, yes symbols or symbols is also a meaning of paribhasa but uh, have you met in uh, met while you study grammar paribhasa sutra paribhasa sutra there are some types of sutras uh, in grammar uh, sanya sutra vidhi sutra paribhasa sutra and so on so paribhasa sutra refers to the sutras which are like rules which are like rules uh, which which do not do ex uh, an exact uh, work but it's like a rule for uh, all the works done in grammar like naye parang yutte or uh, like pubba madotita masaran sarena vyoja it's it's like uh, an advice or a rule so here also paribhasa refers to such rules so in this introduction section some rules or some uh, advices are given uh, about this whole vuttodaya book we can call symbols also but actually it's uh, about rules or advices so let's go to the second gatha second verse it's the uh, reason for the composition of this work reason for the composition of buttodaya pingala charya dihi chandang yamuditam pura suddha magatika nang tang na sadheti yatichitam so here uh, we can read the rough meaning in a red color that prosody which was written before beginning with the teacher pingala does not serve the purpose for those who know pure magadhi in the way it is desired so uh, that means before the composition of this vutto their book there were some prosody books there there were uh, prosodies there like done by pingala charya dehi there was a teacher called pingala so pingala charya means the teacher called pingala so pingala charya dehi chandang chand means prasadi the pali and sanskrit word for prasadi yang uditam pura pura in ancient times uh, there was prasadi uh, written by the teachers like pingala so uh, Ping pingala is the first one to actually uh, compose a prasadi his prasadi is called as chanda shastram you can read uh, under the red color meaning pingala charya street is on prasadi is called chanda shastram in some places i have seen this like chanda chanda sutra but here it is mentioned mentioned chanda shastram so that is the pingala charya uh, prasadi and that is the first prasadi and it is written in sanskrit and uh, later uh, kedara bhatt a teacher called kedara bhatt wrote another prosody based on chanda shastra chanda shastra of pingalachari it's called as rutta ratnakara it's also a sanskrit uh, book for studying prosody so there were prosody books in ancient times uh, done by pingalacharya and other teachers but but there was a problem what is the problem suddha magatika nan thang na sadheti yati chitam thang that prasadi suddha magatika nan suddha means clean 
so magadika means clean or pure magadika means the people who only knows magadhi language or pali language so the uh, prosadis com uh, composed in sanskrit does not serve the purpose of the people who only know pure magadhi language so that is the uh, meaning of this stanza and that is the reason for the composition of this uttode book there were some prosodies in the in ancient times like chandas chandas shastram and uh, vrutta ratnakara both of them and other prosodies also were in a uh, sanskrit language there was not a single book to learn prosody in pali language or in magadhi language so that's why venerable sangarakita composes this a uh, pali prosody called as utto de so are there any questions it's clear pante saru saru okay. saru so sale punyachari you don't have questions yes vanya i don't have any questions at okay. this moment okay so, excuse me pante okay me may i have question about the, okay, the work sure. chan, chanda we usually translate at uh, because you explain the um, rosadi and mitra is different so okay we the pali work for the mitra and rosadi is different or, or not actually different i i was going to explain it uh, later actually the english word is uh, different in english we call uh, prosody for the book or for the study or for the work done for the study of chand uh, the meter and we call meters for the verses that are presented or introduced within the uh, prosody but in pali and in sanskrit the word is same okay so meter is also called as chand or in uh, in sanskrit and in singhala words it's called as chandas chandas with the s in the uh, end uh, and the prosody is also called as uh, chandas so in pali the term is actually used for both okay so sometimes yes. this chandas the word chanda sometimes refers to the uh, sanskrit language also we we uh, once we met uh, that point in our one lecture i cannot remember in which uh, mm. in chulavagga can you remember lecture chanda so arope ya is mane that was in doc doctors doctor ashutosh uh, oh yeah yeah in so chulavagga bande oh yeah yeah in chulavagga so in that place the chan the word chanda refers to sanskrit language and uh, in some places chanda refers to a uh, ved the vedic uh, text so this this chanda the word chanda has so many meanings but uh, here uh, we should remember that the chanda refers to two meanings in the in 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 uh, regarding prosody uh, it refers to prosody itself like we can tell the uttodaya like chandas book or something in sri lanka we call it chandas book or the chandas shastra he also chandas shastra uh, the uh, the book done by pingala chari is called as chandas shastra because chanda the word chanda itself refers to prosody and uh, within the book we will uh, meet later uh, most of the meters actually all all the meters are called as chandas so the, this word can be used in uh, both meanings okay yeah thank you vande okay so one uh, question so, okay vande ko vande vande bada athura nyana idu yes vande so so okay. under this uh, word prosody so the okay. other other related areas such as uh, alankara so so they fall under prosody right the alankara they... fall under prosody are the related areas bante which comes which is related to uh, the composition of the verses ah uh, yeah 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 i think i think we can put those things uh, under prosody but i i have no idea about that actually 
Okay, Bhante, thank you. Alankar. Uh, so, Bhante, like uh, yes. in Southern India, we often say the Changdas. So, in that case, in the Southern India part, this refers to the Sanskrit language or is it refers to the Vedic? Uh, like Chandabheda, places like Chandabheda and so on. Are you, yes. are you asking about Chandabheda? Yes, Bande, in the, in, yes. Uh, actually, as, as I understand, uh, it refers to not Sanskrit or not uh, Vedic language. It refers to the uh, prosody. Because uh, when we compose uh, uh, verses in Pali, uh, we should consider about the prosody. So sometimes uh, within verses, within stanzas, we have to do some changes in order to uh, protect the prosody, in order to not break down the prosody. So that is mentioned in uh, Rupa Siddhi, Saddhaniti and so many grammar books. I don't think it refers to Sanskrit or Vedic. There can be places, but I, as I understand uh, what you're asking about is uh, that. Okay. Yeah, because we have seen such a uh, such a word they use the, in the uh, Sudamana, like uh, Sandhi and Nama Ah, yeah, yeah, in Sandhi, in Sandhi, you you so meet. So I was thinking. Uh, yes. Uh, our teacher said it's a uh, Sanskrit. So in the Sandhi and Nama chapter. Okay. Is a Sanskrit or is just a prosody? In Nama chapter. Yes, Nama and the Sandy chapter, the both chapters, we have found the Changdas. Uh, I have no idea about uh, mentioning in Nama chapter, but in Sandy chapter, it's, it's actually prosody. Because, uh, because in many places, like in the Rasang and Dighang, in sutra, is sutras like shortening and longening of vowels, we do that uh, in most times to protect the prosody in order to uh, protect the prosody, like in Evangame Muni Chare, in that place, actually, the, the real word is Muni, Muni Chare. But in order to uh, protect, uh, in order to be in accordance with the prosody, that uh, the short vowel E in Muni is longened, Muni Chare. So in such places, uh, the grammar books mention this is because uh, this is in order to protect the prosody. Chanda Bheda. Okay, thank you, Bandi. Okay. So, is this way we are uh, going on? Is okay. I, I think it will take a lot of time, though. <laughs> so, yeah. but maybe we can make a short way. Huh? We can make a short way what something is important and this point out. <laughs> Should you go in a Me? short way? Uh, yes, because so you say we have very limited time. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Then, okay. No, I was thinking about the newcomers <laughs> because many of our friends are new no, to this. Uh, so the third stanza is the extent of this book, extent of this book, the scope of Uttode, what Uttode talks about. Uh, actually, the, the second stanza, not the first one. Tato magada bhasaya matta vanna vidhedanang lakya lakhana sangyuttang pasannatta padakkama. Tato, therefore, therefore uh, refers to the previous gatha actually, uh, the the people who only knows the pure, pure Magadhi cannot understand the Sanskrit prosody. Therefore, Tato, therefore, Magadha Bhasa in Pali language or in Magadha language, Matta Vanna Vibhedana. This is very important. Matta Vanna Vibhedana. Matta Vibhedana and Vanna Vibhedana. There are two types of meters. Matta and Vanna. We have learned this in our class. Matta meter and one meter. Actually, uh, in Vutto, there later, uh, this is uh, called as Matta Vutti and one Vutti. Matta Vutti 
vanna vutti there are two types of meters matta vutti and vanna vutti in other words matta vutti chanda and vanna vutti chanda so uh, here the meaning is given as matta matta is measure or uh, matra in sanskrit and in singhalese it's matra the meter related to matras or measures the measure is the english word given here for matta or matra matra is actually a measurement to uh, measure long uh, short and long syllables so uh, there is a kind of uh, meters which is called as matta meter or matta uh, vutti meter and another one which is called as vanna vutti meter syllab uh, syllabic meters syllabic meters so there are two kinds of uh, meters uh, within this vutto there that is matta vanna vibhedanam uh, uh, the prosody is divided into measure meters and syllabic meters in other words again i will uh, say in pali matta vutti chanda and vanna vutti chanda so that is the important point then lakya the third line lakya lakana sangyuttang lakya lakana sangyuttang what does this mean lakya meaning the meaning of lakya is example lakana is characteristic as we know lakana is characteristic so actually the literally uh, literary meaning of lakana is characteristic but in in grammar and places like this actually the meaning of lakana is sutra in grammar also sometimes uh, uh, sometimes we use this the word lakana uh, referring to sutras in grammar so lakana is the uh, sutras which notes about the grammatical points and the examples which are been noted are called as lakya lakya so lakya is example lakana is sutra or uh, 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 introduction uh, of characteristics of a, uh, of something some of a grammatical point or something so in in grammar so here also lakya lakya is example lakana is sutra you can remember like that lakana is sutra so lakya lakana sangyutta means sangyutta the word sangyutta means uh, combine combination so lakya lakana sangyutta means in this book in vutto there examples and sutras are combined examples and sutras are, uh, are together so that is another important point because in grammar when we learn grammar we know that the sutra and uh, and the example uh, are different first we say the sutra and then comes example uh, example like uh, for for instance like in sarasare lopang sarasare lopang is the sutra then in kachchayana yasindriyani samathangatan it is the example the sutra and example uh, are different but in this vutto there this is a very special point uh, sutra and example are same that means by the sutra the example also given later you will understand this uh, the the rough meaning is that sutra and example are together in this vutto there a book uh, not like in other grammar books then pasannatha padakkamang pasanna means clear clean and clear atta means meaning pada means words kama means order so in this book there are uh, there is a clean and clear order of meaning and words this is just a praising about his uh, own work or, or, or an uh, encouragement to study this vutto the book so that is uh, about the extent of this book or the scope uh, addressed within this book matta vutti chanda and vanna vutti chanda that is uh, one important point and another important point is that in this book sutras and examples are combined so is that clear for you yes vanne very clear 
Okay. So then the next stanza, the name of the book. Idang vutto deyang nama lokiya chanda nisitang arabhissa mahang dani te sang sukha vibuddhiya. So the name of the book is vutto daya. Idang vutto deyang nama. Then uh, the book named as vutto daya. So here he uh, presents the name of the book. Then uh, it is, you see, it's it's kept in Napunsakalinga because this uh, this is adjective to uh, no actually here it is object. Uh, so Lokia Chanda Nisitang. Lokia Chanda Nisitang. This is uh, another uh, point to be uh, talked about. Lokia Chanda. What is Lokia Chanda? There are two types of chandas in Sanskrit. One is Vedic chandas and another one is uh, classical chandas or the world, worldly chandas. Vedic chanda and uh, Lokiya chanda. There are two types of chandas in Sanskrit. But here the Uttode only talks about, only presents the Lokiya chanda classical prosody and it depends or it relies on the Lokiya Chanda. Lokiya Chanda Nisitang means, Nisita means rely or depend. So this Vutto there depends on or relies on Lokiya Chanda, not Vedic Chanda. Vedic Chanda or Vedic Chandas is the prosody used in Vedic scripts. Vedic Chandas is not used in other places outside the Vedic texts. So in Sanskrit prosody uh, books like in Chandasastra and in Vritta Ratnakara, as I know, both of these are presented, Vedic Chanda and uh, the Lokiya Chanda. But in, in our Vuttodaya, in our Pali prosody, only Lokiya Chanda or classical prosody is presented. The Vedic prosody is uh, not presented because we have nothing to do with Vedic prosody, Nisitang concerned with Arabhissa Mahandani Te Sang Sukha Vibuddhiya Ahang I, Arabhissa I will begin uh, uh, Idani now Te Sang of those Sukha Vibuddhiya easy comprehension, comprehension. So here those uh, refers to the people who only knows Magadha language or Pali language. This prosody named Vuttodaya the composition of meter, which is concerned with classical prosody, I will now begin for the easy comprehension of those who know uh, Suddha Magadhi. So here the Venerable Ananda Jyoti says that the, the word Suddha Magadhi, uh, word Suddha Magadhi, Suddha, the word Suddha in Suddha Magadhi uh, is put here to reject the, reject Ardha Magadhi. Have you heard about Ardha Magadhi? So he, he says this word is put here to reject Ardha Magadhi. But in uh, Burmese tradition, we learned uh, Suddha Magadhi, pure Magadhi. He mentions pure Magadhi to uh, reject Sanskrit language. Those who know those who know Sanskrit language can study, can learn from uh, ancient books. They don't want a new, uh, new book. But those who only know pure Magadhi need a, a new book to learn uh, Pali prosody. So that is the meaning of uh, that stanza. So let's go to the next one. No questions, right? No. Are no there any questions? questions? No. no okay. okay. Then symbols in the syllabic meters. Next stanza is about symbols in the syllabic meters. We said there are two two types of meters in uh, within this Vutto there. Uh, one is measure meter or matta chanda. Another one is syllabic meter, one chanda. There are two types of meters. So here in this stanza, this, this verse, uh, symbols in the syllabic meters are presented. Symbols in the syllabic meters are presented. Sabbagla nadi galahu bhya majjanta garu jasa majjantala rate tet gana go garu lo lahu. So these are the symbols we use in 
syllabic meter. So the meaning is like this, sabagla na, that is the first line of that verse, sabagla na, bas, which are all heavy symbols or light are called as ma and na respectively. This uh, verse is a little bit complex, but I will explain it. Uh, here, ba, ba is, uh, refers to the gana in Pali, gana. Gana means a group of syllables, a cluster of syllables is called as a gana, a group or a cluster. So in uh, other words, it is, uh, they are bas. In this book, uh, we call uh, ganas in Pali as bas. So bas or ganas or groups, which are all heavy syllables, the groups that consist only heavy syllables are called as ma. The name of that group is ma. And the groups which have only light syllables are called as na. The name is na. So ma and na are two symbols for groups. The groups which have only heavy syllables are called as ma. The groups which have only light syllables are called as na. So uh, ma in Pali, ma gana and na gana. Ma gana, na gana. Ma gana is ma group. Uh, the group named as ma. Na gana is na group. The group named as na. And uh, there, are, there are some other syllab syllable groups like beginning with the heavy syllable or with a light are called bha and ya. If a group begins with the heavy syllable and the rest are light syllables, that group is called as bha. And when a group starts with a light syllable and the rest of syllables are heavy, that group is called as ya. Then uh, bha gana and ya gana four groups, ma, na, bha, ya. Uh, next one is bas with a heavy syllable in the middle. If a heavy syllable is there in the middle, that group is called as ja. If a heavy syllable uh, is in the end of the group, that is called as sa, the name of that group is sa. Uh, so the next line, bas, bas with light syllable in the middle, is called as ra group. Uh, bas with light syllable in the at the end are called as ta, uh, ta group. Ta, ta group. Ta gana. So thus there are eight bas or eight groups. Thus there are eight groups. Ma, magana, nagana, bhagana, yagana, jagana, sagana, and ragana, tagana. There are all eight groups. And then in the last line, ga stands for heavy syllable. Ga is the symbol for heavy syllable and la is the symbol for light syllable. So these are the uh, symbols or terms we use in uh, syllabic, syllabic meters. So then we, sh uh, we should clarify what is called as a heavy syllable and what is called as a light syllable. Uh, uh, first we Let's go to the light syllables. Light syllables are the short vowels. There are three short vowels in Pali, A, E, U. So these short, three short vowels are called as light syllables. And then the, uh, when, the, when some consonants, when a consonant is joined with those light syllables that uh, joined, joined letters uh, are also called as one light syllable. For example, uh, we know A, E, U. Those three, three vowels in Pali are short vowels and those are light syllables. And the uh, letters like Ka, Ki, Ku, those are also, those are also light syllables. The consonant consonants joined with short vowels are also called as light syllables. So those are the, uh, those are the types of light syllables in Pali. Okay, so light syllables, we can call them short syllables also, short syllables, so light syllables. 
uh, in Pali, the uh, term for light syllables is lahu, short for uh, light syllables. So, uh, to, when talking about the heavy syllables, what are the heavy syllables? Heavy syllables are mainly the long vowels in Pali, R, E, O, A, O. Five long vowels in Pali are called as heavy syllables. And then the consonants joined, consonants joined with those uh, long vowels are also called as heavy syllables, like ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. Consonants, when they are joined with long vowels, are called as heavy syllables. So there are uh, some other uh, kinds of heavy syllables also. I think we should go there and first clarify uh, that, then come back to uh, this verse. So here in this, this uh, verse, heavy and light syllables. We should plus first clarify this, this verse and this, then uh, go back to that one, heavy and light syllables. So there are uh, four kinds of heavy syllables and only one kind of light syllables. What are the heavy syllables? Sangyogadi, Sangyogadi, this is one kind. Dighocha, this is the second uh, kind. Nigahita parocha, this is the third kind of heavy syllables. Then uh, garu, panko, padanto, va, this is the fourth type of uh, heavy syllables. There are four types Sangyogadi, digho, nigahita paro, and padanto. These are four types of heavy syllables. And prasonyo uh, matiko luju, this line uh, present, uh, present the uh, light syllables. There are there 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 is only one type of light uh, light syllables. So let's go to the meaning. Sangyogadi. Sangyogadi. Meaning of Sangyogadi is that that vowel which is before a conjunct. When a vowel, short vowel or long vowel, when a vowel is before a conjunct. Conjunct means a joined consonants. Uh, a vowel is there. And after that vowel, there is a there is a uh, 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 two or three joined consonants. Then the first vowel is regarded uh, as uh, a heavy syllable. Uh, let's see something like buddho. In buddho, uh, you see there is a bu. Bu is a actually a light syllable because there is a short vowel, but this bu is followed by a conjunct, d, d, h, there is a conjunct. So because of that conjunct following the vowel, this vowel is considered as a, a long vowel. Actually, it is not a long vowel, but because of the conjunct uh, following it, this vowel is considered as a long vowel or a heavy syllable. So, should I this yes. example? Uh, here you see actually a short vowel, isn't it? Short vowel. U is a short vowel. Uh, followed by a conjunct. D H. It is a joined. So this followed by a conjunct. This B short syllable is considered as a heavy one. B to consider this B U D as a syllable. Is that clear? Yes, Pande. Okay, so Gadi. And other one, other part I will type, uh, uh, type is Digho Igho refers to vowels in Pali. A, U, A, and O. O, show uh, is long. Okay, so uh, two types of heavy syllables are discussed now. 
the next one uh, and we, we can adhere the uh, consonants joined with these long vowels like uh, ka and ki ku ke okay now there are two types of uh, heavy syllables here uh, one is the uh, vowel short or long vowel uh, followed by a conjunct and the second type is uh, the long vowels and long vowels uh, joined with the consonants sangyogadi digho then the third one is nigahita paro nigahita paro nigahita para means a vowel followed by nigahita the vowel followed by nigahita like for example uh, like this kang so here the a vowel is followed by nigahita so let's say kang here uh, this is actually a short vowel but because it is followed by nigahita we consider uh, all these letters actually as a one heavy syllable so this is the third type of heavy syllables third type third type of garu uh, syllables then the next uh nigahita paro uh, padanto this is special padanto padanta refers to the uh, last letter of the or the last syllable of of a uh, of a line in a verse in every line uh, of a verse the last syllable is considered as a heavy syllable now, now let's see nahi verena verani nahi verena verani you see the verani it is short actually then then comes sammantida kudachana sammantida okay so this is the first line of this stanza so the last letter of this stanza ni is actually short but we consider it as a heavy syllable so every almost everywhere uh, we consider the last letter of a line as a heavy syllable so there are four kinds of uh, heavy syllables then uh, the uh, light syllable is uh, a sorry a e u three short vowels in pali and the uh, consonants joined with those three short vowels these are the short uh, syllables or the light syllables so that is uh, shown by this stanza heavy and light syllables so we call heavy syllables in pali as uh, we call them garu and light syllables we call lahu garu and lahu uh, so uh, this garu in sri lanka and in other some uh, some other traditions also they call guru because the sanskrit word is guru in sri lanka also we use we mostly use guru but in myanmar they use only uh, garu but in pali actually both terms are terms are there guru and garu both are correct so you can use garu or guru as you like uh, talking about these light syllables the pali word is actually lahu but sanskrit term is lagu lagu so because of that in sri lanka we uh, mostly mostly use lagu uh, for uh, light syllables in myanmar they only use lahu so that uh, is the difference of light and heavy syllables is that clear for you all Yeah, it's very clear, Pante. Sorry, okay, sorry. no questions, right? Uh, sorry, Pante. Okay. Uh, yes, Pante. Yes, Pante. I'm I'm a very beginner, Pante. Sorry. Bante. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, Pante. So about the like the the last one, Pante, the padanto one, Pante. Uh, okay. Could could you please go back to the notes, Pante? So the notes. Ah, uh, okay. I'll go back to the note. Okay. Thank Pardon. you. Thank you, Bante. So in here, is it mean that Verena, Verani, and Samantida, all the 
follow in the the last of it are considered as heavy syllable band. Yeah, in every line actually, all not everywhere. There are some exceptions. I will tell them later. Uh, for now, you can uh, understand it like in every line of a verse. There are four lines in a verse. No, uh, there are four lines in a verse. So in every line, the last syllable is considered as a heavy syllable. So the 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 only the so for example in here uh is someone the last the last word of this line but ah uh, no no so it is kudachanang actually so that is the sec so in here uh, only yeah. okay yes so so in here only the e in the wherani is the heavy syllable but and not the a uh, in the wherena but is it like that then? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only the last syllable of the line. Uh, you see, this is oh, okay. one line and this is another line. So in this line, uh, you know, in this way is actually, it is a it is a, low, a heavy syllable. Re is a heavy syllable. Na is not a heavy syllable. It's a light syllable or a short, short syllable. We can say in other words. Here also, yeah. way is uh, heavy or long. Ra is heavy or long. Ni is actually short. But according to this rule, Padanto, this ni is considered as a heavy syllable because it is the Pada Anta. Pada means, means line, Anta means end. So ah, ending okay. syllable of a line is considered as a heavy syllable. It is just considered as a heavy one because uh, there are some reasons. Okay. okay. So this is the general rule, right, Bante? This is the general rule, yes, yes. Okay, Bante. Thank you very much, Bante. So, so, so this... Okay. So yes, here. Sorry, uh, Bante. Okay, yes, in the Seale, yes, in the. Yes, um, Bante. I want to ask about the K. It uh, uh, before the Nigahita, uh, but sometimes there's a Nigahita e followed by a vowel and the nigahita e chain into um, m without the dot. So in that case, uh, that syllable considered uh, heavy or not? Uh, like in like in uh, this example, some bhut here, here is a nigahita. So as I understood, you asking about when this uh, nigahita becomes m, what can happen? Is that a question? Yes, and sometimes it followed by a um, vowel after the higahita and then the vowel and then the nigahita chain. Or oh, when there is the a in vowel case. after the... Okay. So for example, uh, for example here, yang atang. Sorry, not in here, yeah, young atang. So you are asking when this nigahita becomes M like this, then what happens? Yes. So then this this again becomes a short one because this is now not nigahita. This is now a normal syllable. Yes. Yama. This is not nigahita anymore. So these two are considered as two different. Uh, short syllables or two different light syllables. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Bante. Okay. So there are two uh, groups, two group, uh, sorry, eight groups in uh, meter, eight groups. Groups are the uh, clusters of syllables. So we know there are two types of syllables, heavy syllables and light syllables, or in other words, long syllables and short syllables. Uh, do you have a question about why we call them syllables without calling them letters? Is that clear for you? We call them syllables, not letters. Uh, so, Bande, what is the reason? What is the difference of syllable and the letter? It, uh, it is, I, I did not meet it anywhere, but as I understand, the reason is like this. 
letters are like k consonant itself is a letter and a itself is a letter it is also a vowel so letters are like this individual ones are letters but syllables can be uh, also the joint ones can be called as syllables uh, so as i understand this is this is the reason why they why we call them syllables not uh, letters so but in the body terms yes. they are the same or, or different actually in pali we call them uh, in the same way we call them one so one is the same one is a synonym for akkara letter so in pali actually there is no problem like that we call them just we, call, we just call them one or akkara but we uh, further clarify that here one this uh, does not refers to individual uh, letters here one or here akkara refers to uh, join uh, can refer to joined letters like this like this ka uh, okay so thank you we clarify that at the same time okay yes yeah, so, so we have uh, another sister utamai i think she she raised his her hand maybe she has some questions okay i did not see yes you can ask uh, thank you bante thank you sayali uh, can you hear me yes yes we can hear you okay so um can i say this uh, like a syllable is like this like you say it is either the vowel or the vowel in combination of its consonant um, yes. so it means syllable is the sound we make so can yes, i yes. can i just summarize um, what you just taught us okay of course okay. systematically like you um, in a very nice way um, like uh, this for the heavy for the heavy um, syllable there are four is that the um, the sound before a, a, a joint consonant before a nikahita at the end of the line or the five long vowel and its consonant is that okay to put it that way for the heavy yes, it's for less syllable. heavy syllable yes and then the, right. and the only one group of light um, syllable Like group, yes. the, the like group of syllable is the the three sh short vowel and its consonant. Is that okay? Yes, yes, okay. yes. You are correct. Thank you, Bante. Okay. So time is up. So there are yeah. two types of syllables. Yeah, we can uh, stop at eight. Is it okay? Yes, Bante. Okay. So uh, there are two types of syllables. garu and lahu and uh, in sanskrit guru and laghu in english heavy syllables and light syllables there are two types of syllables well so then so when these syllables combine when these syllables combine when we when we make groups by these syllables actually we take only three syllables to create a one group only three syllables for a one group so there can be uh, lahu or garu heavy or light only three syllables in a group in a cluster or in pali in a gana in a gana there are only three syllables so when we uh, make when we create such groups by this uh, heavy syllable and heavy syllables and light syllables there can be uh, as a total there can be eight groups there can be eight groups when we combine this garu and lahu like there can be a group that is combined uh, the, with only heavy syllables heavy 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 that is a one group and there can be a group that is com only uh, created by light syllables light 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 and there can be a group big, big, begins with heavy and uh, two of the rest syllables are light and there can be another group which start from light and the rest are heavy so like that all groups there can be all uh, eight groups or all cluster is that clear for you why are uh, there are only eight clusters or only eight bars in prosody that is the reason there are only 
two types of syllables. So when we combine those syllables and make groups, there can be, we can only create eight. That is the reason for uh, being only eight groups or only eight ganas in prosody. So, Bandi, I have a question regarding this part. Okay. Uh, so, in, in, in this gata, so we say four, you see? The nang, 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 nang. So, but you said each, oh, but you uh, have only three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, very good question. Actually, actually, we will talk about that because, uh, because look at this topic of this uh, uh, the gata, symbols in the syllabic meters, you see? These symbols, these, these groups are also about syllabic meters. There are uh, another kind of, there is another kind of meters called as uh, measure meters. Or matta vutti chand. So as you said, as Ali Punyatari said, we met some other types of groups, but they are included in matta vutti chand, not in these syllabic meters. That is the reason. Venerable Sangharakhita first introduces the syllables of Vannavutti and then he will come to Mattavutti also. First syllabic meters and then uh, measure meters. Is that clear now? Uh, so that means this part is talk about the uh, syllabic meters. Only we count the syllables. Yes. Only we count syllables. Yes, we don't count uh, matras or moras. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Bandi. Okay. So that uh, these are the eight ganas we should learn. So we will uh, stop by this uh, verse for today. So you should uh, actually try to understand very well these eight groups in this book. Uh, the what you call these symbols are in the Western form. This straight line in our tradition in Vutto there is used for short syllable. This is the symbol for short syllable. Okay. The straight line is the symbol to uh, denote the short syllable. So here in the first one, uh, three short, uh, three straight lines mean three short syllables. Okay, and curved line in our tradition, in Pali tradition, denotes long or heavy symbols. So three uh, curved lines uh, stand for three heavy syllables, but it is opposite in uh, Western prosody and Western tradition. They use straight lines for heavy syllables and uh, curved lines for light syllables. There is such a difference. So in this book, Venerable Ananda Jyoti's book, the Western method is followed, not our uh, Pali method. So we should uh, keep that in mind. Okay. So Bante, it means that in the traditional way, this kind of symbol is also used, but only uh, it's reverse, Bante? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This, these symbols are used in our tradition also, but the, the we use them is completely different. We use this straight line for to denote short or light syllables, and they use uh, in in Western tradition they use this straight line for uh, heavy syllables. That is the difference. So I will show you. Here this is the magana magana. You see ma or Magana, the cluster or the group or the Gana named as Ma. So as we discussed in Magana, there should be all heavy syllables. You see in the first point, bas which are all heavy syllables. Okay, bas which are all he heavy syllables are called as Ma Gana. Bas which are with all light syllables are called as Na Gana respectively. So in Magana, there are all heavy syllables. So here, uh, here also, uh, actually this is Magana and these three, these three are all heavy syllables. So in our way, it should be 
it should be showed like uh it should be showed in three uh lines. curved lines yes so this is the opposite this 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 method of uh, using these syllables is the opposite from uh western method okay so you should remember these uh, uh groups actually so uh, let's see like like for magana magana there are all three heavy syllables for example in sabbanyu in sabbanyu here example for magana is sabbanyu you see here sub is considered as a one heavy syllable ban is considered as a one heavy syllable and nu is considered as a one heavy syllable here because of the conjunct uh, here also because of the conjunct here it is a, a long vowel so there are three heavy syllables because there are three heavy syllables this is this is this cluster or this group is called as a magana so example for nagana like uh, uh, sugata like in sugata you see all are short or light syllables so this is a nagana uh, group consists with all light syllables and then comes uh, bagana and then uh, yagana and then uh, jagana sagana ragana and thagana these are the eight groups in for, for example for bagana bagana starts with the heavy syllable and rest are uh, light for example uh, let's say uh maraji maraji is another word for buddho synonym for buddho maraji here this starts with a heavy syllable and the rest are short or light in yagana uh the first syllable is light and the rest are uh heavy like in uh vitakko let's say vi tak ko you see first one is short and the rest are long or heavy in jagana uh, the middle one is heavy like in sa samadhi you see middle syllable is heavy and the uh, other two are uh, light so in sagana the ending syllable is heavy like in bhagava See, ba, g, wa. Ending syllable is heavy. It is sagana. In ragana, first and last syllables are heavy. For example, uh, chetana, chetana. You see, first one is heavy, last one is heavy, middle one is light. And in thagana. uh first and second syllables are heavy and the last one is uh, light for example nibbana nib ba na you see so these are the eight uh eight groups or eight ganas so so you there is a technique to uh, remember these eight groups uh, in in uh, in myama also they are, they are they use a technique like they use some words like for magana for example for magana they have a word like mabunze in myama in myama language mabunze so when you recite like mabunze actually that that word is word stands stands for some meanings but in mabunze like this mat bun che this is uh, begins from m so they know this is magana and all syllable are heavy so 
when when you say magana they remember this word so they uh, it's easier for them to uh, recognize that in magana there are three heavy syllables so uh, for example we can also use such things for magana we can use like something like uh, maganyu this other uh, maganyu you see if you remember this word maganyu for magana for magana maganyu so when i say magana you just remember maganyu mag gan nu three heavy syllables so, so you know what magana is for uh, nagana we can say something like something starts from n uh, can you suggest some a word starting from m uh, n for nagana nayana. something like nayana, nayana ya okay nayana another word is there another word Kamal, oh. Kamal is nice. Nagara. Nagar is one. Yeah, Nagara is there, and Nakula, and there are so many words starting from N, and those have all light syllables. So, if if you can remember this one of these words for Nagana, now group like Nayana or Nagara or Nakula, uh, then you know, uh, then you remember that word when I mention Nagana. Uh, so, like Nagana, Nayana. So in Nayana, all are uh, light syllables. So Nagana is all light group. So here also I will uh, write some words for Bhagana. It's like, uh, can you suggest a word? Balaka, Panti. <laughs> Balaka, yeah, sorry, but Balaka, yeah. Here you can remember this word for. Bhagana. So Yagana. Can you suggest? Something like this. Yadicha. Uh, have you get it? Yadicha. Yadicha. Oh, oh, a Yadicha. name like this. Yasodha. Yadi? Yadi Tang. Yadi Tang. Yadi Tang. Yadi Tang. No, the yes, second yadi syllable tang. has to be long, heavy. Oh. Yadi Tang. Oh, yeah, long. the middle, middle, middle syllable also have to be long. Then, like this, Yadi Tang. <laughs> so, let's say Yasodha is a word for. Uh, Woman, Yasodha. Oh, we have Yasinda, no? We have Yasinda in our class. Yasin. Yasinda. Oh. Yasinda. So this is also Yagana. So you can remember one word like this for Yagana. For Jagana. Uh, something like Janeti. Janeti is for mother. A synonym for uh, amma, amba, and so on. Ma, matu, janetti. This is for uh, jagana. Example for jagana. For sagana, uh, something like uh, sumana. This is also a name. Sumana, or something like uh, sarabu, which is for gecko. Sarabu. You can remember one of those words. So then for Ragana, you can remember something like, are there suggestions? Uh, for Ragana? Kachati. Something like, what? Kachati. Kachati. For Ragana? It has to yes. start with a Ra. Uh, actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are going to, we are going to, uh, find the easier method to remember those. So it should start with the ra, something like you know, Revati is a word, uh, is a name, Revati. Revati, you see, start from ra and both uh, uh, starting syllable and ending syllable is long or heavy. And 
Rohini. Rohini. So uh, those are examples for Ragana. And uh, at last for Tagana, you can remember something like uh, Todeye, you know, Todeye. 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 O Tarunya Yut. Tarunya, Tarunya. So you can remember one of these examples to easily uh, remember the eight groups. We will use these eight groups uh, in the next discussions. Okay, so are there any questions? Is that clear so for you? I remember there's another short oh, yes. way to memorize this one. They said the heavy labor are start from okay. the, uh, beginning, middle, end, that one. I think that is easier. Heavy syllable start from the beginning. Beginning, middle, and end. Oh, what? So they, they mention like a ba. Okay, uh, but. Ba, jia, or ra, something like that. Uh, they just make a for example if you're doing the uh, the three levels they of only poem. one yeah 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 that's why it's very easy to remember oh that's okay yes yeah. there. there is a poem it's, it's actually very easy if there's a poem poem it's very easy but if there is not you can uh, use this technique also but we have to remember many vocabularies <laughs> oh yeah many technical terms so, uh, whenever Atalanyan, is that clear for you? <laughs> yes, Bhante, it's clear for me. Actually, I was doing something okay. different and like, you know, okay. code everything. Like for Sabha Garu, I use as okay. Saga Ma. So, Sabha Garu is Ma. So, I had to remember the three. Then, Sa La Na. That means Sabha Lahu is Na. Sa La Na. Saga Ma, Sa La Na, like that. So sabba garu. Okay, okay, okay. That is that is also possible. Sabba lahu is na like that one day. Okay, okay. Like However, you, you should know. actually remember those <laughs> in any 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 technique. Okay, so shall we wind okay. up the discussion for today? So what about the other participants? Did you understand the, uh, up to now? Yes, Bante. Quite clear, Bante. Okay. Ah, uh, what about Doctor Ryan? I think he has left. Ah, uh, I'm here, Bante. Yeah, I'm oh, okay. here. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Bante. It, it's very okay. Is that clear? clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Bante. Okay. okay. So thank you thank all you for so participating and listening. Thank, thank you very much, Bante. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank you so much for your day. Thank you very much, Bhante.